I've written down the identities here for us. And you can see that sine of pi over two, which is like 90 degrees, this is in radians, but pi over two is 90. So cos cosine of 90 minus theta equals sine of theta and sine of 90 minus theta equals cosine theta. So if you can remember that sine and cosine are cofunctions, secant and cosecant, tangent and cotangent, that's an easy way to remember them. But let's look at the triangle here, a right triangle, and kind of analyze you know, why it works and you know, uh, where these come from. So for example, if you're here at this angle, theta, and this is a 90 degree angle, this angle over here has to be 90 minus theta because all the angles in a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. If this one's 90, these two have to add up to 90. So say for example, if this was 10, this would have to be 80 degrees because these add up to a total of 90 degrees, right? So let's just say we're here at this angle. We want to find the sine of theta. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. That's four fifths, right? So let's write that down. But if you want to do cosine of 90 minus theta, that's adjacent over hypotenuse. That's also four fifths. So see how they're equivalent? So it depends on what angle you're working with. So let's take this next one. Say you wanted to find secant of this angle. Okay, secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. So that's five thirds, right? So let me write that, that down for us. But the cosecant of 90 minus theta is hypotenuse over opposite. So that's also 5 thirds. And same thing for tangent, like tangent is opposite over adjacent, that's 4 thirds. But if we do the cotangent of 90 minus theta, that's adjacent over opposite, that's also 4 thirds. So depending on what angle you're using, if you use the complementary angle or the cofunction, okay, you know, you're gonna get an equivalent value. So let's look at some examples, I'll show you how it works. So say for example, you wanted to simplify this expression. Well, tangent of pi over two minus theta, we know that's equal to cotangent of theta, right? And cosine of theta, we're just gonna leave that as cosine of theta. Now, you probably remember from earlier that uh, cotangent of theta is cosine of theta divided by the sine of theta, all divided by this cosine of theta here. Anything divided by one is itself. So I can write that over one. Now, when you divide by a fraction, it's like multiplying by the reciprocal, right? So this is like multiplying by one over cosine theta and you can see the cosine theta is cancel, numerator and denominator, and you're left with one over sine. Well, what does one over sine theta equal? Well, that equals cosecant theta, and we've simplified it down, so using cofunctions, right? Okay, let's look at another example. Say, for example, you had uh, sine squared of 10 degrees plus sine squared of, let's just say it was, um, let's just say, what could we do here? Let's say maybe, uh, 70 degrees, 80 degrees, right? So what you notice here is that these two angles, they add up to 90 degrees, right? They're complementary. But what we can do is we could say, well, hmm, using our cofunctions, I know that sine squared of 80 degrees is actually the same thing as cosine squared of 90 minus 80 degrees, which is 10 degrees, okay? So I'm just gonna bring down this sine squared of 10 degrees plus cosine squared of 10 degrees, and you probably learned from earlier in the chapter or earlier in the year that sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. So this whole thing condenses down to one. This is just the Pythagorean trig identity. As long as these angles are the same, sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to one. So this is a brief overview here of how to understand you know, working with cofunctions. If you're enjoying these math videos, consider supporting me on uh, Patreon. I'll have a link for that. And uh, subscribe to the channel. Check out more math videos on Mario's Math Tutoring YouTube channel. And I look forward to helping you in the future videos. I'll talk to you soon.